In the last video, we took a look at the wing spars and looked at certain things like the excess material that can be removed there, how to match drill and ream the wire brackets, and then of course you've got your root brackets here. So the next step in building the wing is actually to get those spars up onto the table, get your roots pinned so they can't move, and of course we're using our table drawing as a guideline. Once the ribs in, are into place, even though the spars come pre-drilled, you want to make sure that you're double checking everything to your table drawing, that it matches up. If it doesn't, then that's an indicator of, of a bigger problem at hand. Now, if you order a quick build wing rib attachment tab kit, um, this hole isn't drilled into the, in, into the tab, this bottom hole. The top is, the bottom isn't. The reason is because we want to use this hole duplicator to get perfection since the spar is already pre-drilled. Anytime you're drilling, put a piece of steel between the spar cap and the web. You might be tempted to use a little bit of wood, but the problem with the wood is that if a drill bit punches through this aluminum, it'll cut through that wood like it's butter. So you want to use a piece of steel. A quick note about these wing rib attachment tabs, those are actually on both sides of the spar. And on the back side, when you go to install one of your aileron hinge hangers, you're going to notice that that tab is close enough to actually interfere with the riveting of these rivets here. So make sure um, that you're paying attention to the drawing and um, leave out that rib, that last rib attachment tab until this is installed permanently, um, just to make your life a little bit easier. So once he's done that, he went ahead and installed these reinforcement plates along with the wire lugs and this, which we call a compression strut. Now these are weldments. Um, each weldment, uh, even though we do use a steel jig, might be just a hair different. And I'm talking tiny, tiny, tiny amount different. And the reason I'm bringing that up is if you install this, and again, it's just with these two bolts here for now, if you install that compression strut, you may notice that your wing spar might take a bit of a curve. If your wing spars take a bit of a curve locally to that, that compression strut, take a look at removing a hair of material from this um, spacer block, this aluminum spacer block, and we're talking this half inch thick spacer block. We had to remove um, about three sixty fourths of an inch from this this block here, and what that did is it allowed this spar to kind of kick back into position and, and reduce a little bit of a curve that we had. Now there is a left and a right of these. This leg that goes into this bracket is an eighth inch shy. It's an eighth inch short compared to the rest. Um, so pay attention to that too, because if you get a really, really, really bad curve, um, you probably somehow installed this backwards. I say somehow because we've actually intentionally tried to install this backwards and we couldn't get it to go. But that's not to say that somehow somebody somewhere will get it to go by accident. This portion of the rib is removed. That's normal, that's called out in the blueprints. Um, that's only on the clipped wing version. If you're doing the standard wing, then you don't need to worry about clipping out that upright on the rib. Now these inserts again are roughly three inches long. Um, I'm not looking at the blueprints right now, so I can't tell you exactly how long. Um, you, could, you can see that he's on this tube only, on this outer tube only, already drilled his 12 rivet pattern. Now when he gets this tube centered between these two um, inserts, once he gets it centered and the wing is verified square, he can go ahead and pop a Clico hole into, into that. Clico it, come back here, do the same thing. And then of course he'll do this tube and then this tube as well. Um, the big thing, you can see he's got these bolts in here already. That's important. If you don't have a bolt in here, you're not gonna get this thing square. There's no way. Make sure, you can see when I touched this one, that this actually pivoted a little bit. So make sure that everything is tight when you're going to do this. Um, 
It's also worth noting that even though we've re we've removed any curvature in the spar due to this locally, due to this bracketry locally, you may see still a curve between this point here and the root. Now to get rid of that curve, you need to block your wing spar in certain locations and make sure it doesn't move. He put a straight edge across the wing root down there and measured zero degrees. And then he put the straight edge here, and again it's with this angle finder, along this outer rib and measured 1.5 degrees washout. So you want this nose, the nose of this rib, this tip rib, to be down 1.5 degrees. If you build this wing flat on a table and install the wing flat, you're going to induce a washout to the wing tip, and you're going to see that the aileron pops up at the wing tip. So you don't want that. So it's easiest just to induce the washout now, build the aileron so it's flush with that root rib there, and then at the same time flush with the tip rib out here. After he gets the drag tubes done, he's going to pull it back apart, check everything for nicks, prime the pieces that he needs to prime, put it all back together, um, and rivet the wing rib tabs on. And at that point, he can go ahead, or now even, it doesn't matter, go ahead and match drill that hole there to the ribs themselves. Now, when you're going to install these ribs, there should be an even gap all the way around the spar. So what we like to do is we like to use popsicle sticks because they're convenient, and we will shim the spar evenly all the way inside that rib hole there. And that's how you line the ribs. It's not rocket science, it's easy. The gap the same all the way around, that means it's aligned.